What's up everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. About 10-15 minutes ago we had perfect conditions. It was sunny, blue skies, few clouds. I had everything laid out for today's video and it just started dumping and now it's hailing. Been some wild weather lately. I recently got the Toyota Tacoma back. A after slamming through some whoops in Moab, uh, the frame might have had a slight tweak in it and so it needed some modifications to get the steering wheel straight and the alignment dialed. So it's been in the shop for a while. They finally got it fixed. Everything's looking good and I had them weld, just tack weld the, the cams in place so that it shouldn't drop alignment anymore. Like look how far over that cam has to be in order to have alignment. Well that's okay. It used to be pretty much my jump in and go overland vehicle. The cool thing about being prepared to go overlanding is that you pretty much have a bug out vehicle that's always pretty much, it's always set up with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic going on and all the craziness and all the uncertainty I felt there might be some people out there that are looking into uh, how to outfit their vehicle to be a perfect bug out vehicle. So until the rain goes away, I'm going to go over a few key components you want in your bug out vehicle. This is some of the things that make the best bug out vehicle, but any car or truck or SUV could work. This is what is ideal in your bug out vehicle. Four wheel drive capabilities. In a, in a natural disaster or a pandemic or something like that, uh, it's likely that a lot of people are going to be out on the roads, which is going to produce a ton of traffic and that's no good. We want the capability. Uh, to go off-road if need be. The conditions dictate that you need 4x4. It's better to have it than to not. That's why it's ideal to have 4x4. Our Toyota Tacoma has 4x4. You want a reliable vehicle. My truck's probably not the most reliable. You want good approach angles and, and departure angles as well. So this is why I did, did this drawing. This was a boulder. You can't get over it if your bumper's in the way. And so it's important to have something that has good approach angles. Something like a Jeep uh, where the front end is really boxed off and the tires stick out the front, those have great approach angles. Or if you have a truck like mine that maybe had decent approach angles uh, when it was stock, you can upgrade it by adding an off-road bumper. That's what I've done. Same with your departure angle. When you come off of an obstacle, you don't want to come down on your bumper. So it's basically your tire to your bumper, your tire to your bumper. That's your approach angle, whatever this angle is, and your departure angle. So that's approach angles. You want dry storage. In my case, I used a canopy. Uh, you want armor in case you need to ram through some sort of brush or barricade or fence or something. Best to have some armor on your truck. Then it's a good idea to have some off-road lighting capabilities. It's good to have auxiliary power. You want your vehicle to sustain you for an extended period of time. You want it to be not too new, not too old. Uh, the reason being, you don't want it to be old because then it wouldn't be reliable. Things break uh, the older it gets less reliable it is. But you don't want it to be too new either. I don't think my Ford Raptor would be a great bug out vehicle because uh, everything in that truck is controlled by electronics. You want mud terrain tires. Um, like I said, chances are you're gonna need to go off road. So you need either all terrain tires or mud terrain tires. You don't want street slicks. Mud terrain tires are both designed to give you maximum traction and the best sidewall protection. And so you decrease your likelihood of having punctures. And you also want a vehicle with a short wheelbase. So the shorter wheelbase, the better. Another reason why my Ford Raptor is not going to be the best bug out vehicle. It's long. So you have something that's called your break over point. And that is the point to the middle of your truck in between your tires. So if you were to come up a hill that is equally steep on the other side, at which point, at which point can this, can you crest this hill without bottoming out. So on my drawing, it's whatever this angle is that I just drew here. You want something that has a short wheelbase and I should have added this on here, high clearance. So that's high clearance, not just off your bumpers, but off of everything else that's underneath, skid plates, differential cover, um, all that stuff. Uh, as a bonus, one thing that can help you if your truck is not jacked up to the sky is to have rock sliders because when you get to this cresting point you can come up and slide over obstacles. This is a list of some of the things you want to look for when you're deciding to build your bug out vehicle. 
I'm sure there's a lot of other options. This is just what comes to my mind and uh, some of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm looking at my Tacoma and saying, yeah, I think, I think it makes for a really good bug out vehicle. Okay, if you know much about off-roading, none of this is super new, but if you're just getting to this, uh, I wanna demonstrate how important approach angles are and why getting a good high clearance off-road bumper can really, really help. You can take a pickup truck that, you know, is a good utility vehicle, has decent off-road capabilities, but might not necessarily be the best off-roader, and you can turn it into a pretty good bug out vehicle by adding armor. So this, this bumper is by CBI Off-Road. It's an aluminum high clearance T3 bumper is what they call it. So to measure your approach angle, you're gonna go touch the tire and then raise the stick up as high as you can. And the point that you come in contact with your bumper that's what your approach angle is. So this thing is very severe, awesome approach angles, making it really easy to come up to an obstacle that could literally be about this tall and the truck could just drive up over top of it. And it also matters, you know, how much of that you have here. So now what we've done to this truck is we've cut the bed sides down and lopped off quite a bit and added armor instead of all of that bed side that came down here. So on a stock Tacoma, your departure angle is determined by how low your bedside and your bumper is. So the bumper used to come down even with the door sill way over there, come all the way back like this and sit right here. There was a bumper. And so that would make my departure angle pretty low, not the best. Meaning you can get hung up coming off of an obstacle. A CBI off-road high clearance rear bumper increases your departure angle a ton. Do the same stick maneuver. So that's pretty good. Jeeps are amazing. Jeeps have like a departure angle like that. But because this is a pickup truck, it has extra dry storage capabilities, which a Jeep just doesn't have. The Raptor was built from factory to be one of the most superior off-road vehicles, but look how the departure angle compares to the Tacoma. Quite a big difference from where we were at with the Tacoma like this. Starting to hail again. All right, now look at, look at your breakover point on the Raptor. It's much lower. If you were to make a triangle between the, the two wheels to here, to here, that's a pretty low cresting hill. I'm not gonna be able to get up and over a lot without getting hung up in the middle. The Tacoma's not the best thing ever, but it does have a shorter wheelbase and is a little bit taller. And so you can see you have a little steeper hill. So that's why I'm turning my Toyota Tacoma into my bug out vehicle instead of the Raptor. Despite the Raptor having more power and being more fuel efficient, I think in an emergency, the Tacoma is gonna be the better vehicle. Ugh, man, this off and on rain. I just can't seem to get this video rolling. I have to keep stopping. All right, well, we're gonna go look at some of the gear that I'm gonna put in the truck. The educational portion of this video is over. Now I can just show you all of the cool prepper stuff that I'm gonna be putting in the truck. And uh, so, like I said earlier, this is pretty cool because all this stuff has just been laying around my house. When we moved, it all sort of just sat in the Connex box in my barn because I didn't really have a good place to store it. Now that the Tacoma is not my daily driver anymore, it's the perfect place to store it because you just jump in it and go if you had to, but if you need something, you know where it is. If All right, so let's check this out. I got this big bin, it's watertight. It's from Rome Adventure Co. Latches and locks so you can lock it down and has struts so it's easy to open. The first thing I packed in here was a change of clothes for both Desiree and I and just spare old clothes just in case you get wet or something. You'll have what you're wearing and you'll have a change of clothes. Everything's wet now. A bag of baby wipes, a roll of toilet paper, a roll and two rolls of paper towels, a flashlight. I wish everything didn't get so wet. I'm gonna throw a flashlight in here. I'm also gonna throw in a couple headlamps. Here's a slingshot, never runs out of ammo. Toss that in there. This just did not go as planned. I have a buddy heater. This thing's awesome, it runs on propane, the same propane that runs our stove, which I'll show you guys later. It doesn't have CO emissions, it scrubs that so you can breathe the air, you should be fine. A few other things, I have a survival blanket. This is a diving knife, but it also makes a really good 
um, survival knife. It's rust resistant, has a rubber handle because it's made for diving. It even has a little ruler on there, which is torch lighter. I'm gonna have to make sure there's a few different lighters in here. Uh, an ice scrape, uh, a tarp. Tarps are always handy. This is a tire repair kit from Boulder Tools. And you pop a tire, you might want to be able to fix it. Wow, this is nicer than I thought it'd be. And you got a bunch of them. Like this could last you pretty much a million punctures. You guys are gonna make fun of me for this one, but I thought this was pretty clever. So I have two Chinese fire lanterns. These are awesome. They don't take up any space at all. They sit flat in here. And you can use them for a rescue signal if you need it. Okay, I'm gonna put this box here. Ooh, that's a good fit. I like it. I'm not quite done yet. I did add an old pair of army boots in here for myself. If you follow my channel, you know a lot of this gear I carry already. This isn't like a panic weird thing. This is just sort of showing you guys some of the gear that I have that makes this the perfect bug out vehicle. This here is called it the Indeflate system. It's a dual hose and a gauge that allows me to uh, air up my truck. The truck has an onboard air compressor from ARB uh, that I've already installed. I'm also going to make sure that I have a couple of these handheld CB, or sorry, these are ham radios, handheld ham radios. These things are awesome. I basically tore the CB radio out of my truck. I don't use it. We just use these little guys. They work really, really well. They're made by Baofeng and they're really inexpensive, honestly. A couple of these would be awesome to keep in our box and in the cab of the truck as well. Another thing I'm gonna add is a bunch of these awesome slide to zip Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags are super handy. So this old tackle box has some fishing equipment in it if I needed to. Not like, uh, not the best stuff ever, but I'm gonna throw it in the truck as well. Pretty much anything you need to catch a little fish. You got hooks, weights, swizzler deals. Um, I also have a pack of rubber gloves. This is my little miniature fishing rod. I, I got this back when I was, I would ride my motorcycle to uh, to the lake and go fishing, but it's perfect for this. And then a few other items I just tossed in, like two bowls, um, deodorant, soap, lighters, two different lighters. And I'll probably continue to put little things in here as I go. I want it as much to fit in the box as possible in case I had to switch vehicles for some reason. Maybe I jump into Tacoma and the battery's dead. I wanna be able to grab as much as I can as fast as possible. So just being able to grab like just this box, if that's all I can get my hands on, then I'll have the majority of the things I need all in one place. I'm gonna throw this super well-equipped um, box from uh, Outer Limit Supply. It has a really nice trauma kit in it, has medications, it has um, all sorts of stuff in here uh, that we can use bandages, and it's gonna fit in my box and we even have a little bit more room to stuff a few more items. I'm gonna be putting my machete. This thing's sweet. It's got a saw on one end and a choppy chop on the other. Could make a great weapon and also be good for trailblazing. I found this today. <laughs> this is an actual bayonet from like Vietnam or something. Desiree got it for me a long time ago. I'm gonna throw that in there. If you got a bug out, how cool would it be to have a real sword? <laughs> That's awesome. This is a solar panel. It's a three piece solar panel that can keep the truck charged. Um, so you don't have to plug into a wall. So this makes us really self-sufficient because I can plug in um, over the course of you know, a few days, you have, you, know, you have power and you can be running outlets off the bed of the truck. So you pretty much have unlimited power with this. I'll call that good on my box for now and I'm sure I'll come up with more later. If there's things that you think we should put in here, let me know. I am gonna get a separate box full, full of uh, like dry food. Uh, that's a whole nother day. I don't have any means to get that stuff right now. We have, we have plenty of stuff in the house, um, so I might bring some of it out here but I'm just not gonna worry about that for this video. But if you are trying to store food, you want like dry storage, stuff with high high shelf life, uh, a long shelf life that doesn't take a lot to prepare. That's gonna live in the back of the Tacoma. Easy enough. Yeah. Oh, that thing's heavy. Spare tire, good idea to have a full size spare tire in case you have a complete blowout, your tire repair kit doesn't work. 
you can just switch your tire out no problem. Of course, we're also gonna throw in a tire iron to make sure that we can change that out. And I wanna secure this thing really good. So I am going to do a quick little, I'm gonna add on some little uh, strap deals to this bed slide. Cool. Dude, I tell you, it feels good to like, just kind of mess around with the Tacoma. This is like a really good, this is a good excuse to come work on the truck a little bit. That all goes in there like that, that's awesome. I have an ax. What's cool about this thing is that unlike normal water containers, I have another five gallon water container in the barn. You have to change that water out frequently because it gets it goes bad and if you don't have any way to to sterilize it then you can't drink it'll make you sick but with this one you can just fill this thing up which I'm gonna do and you can store that water the water inside will go bad but the filter will clean it as it comes out and so you'll have usable water so it's perfect for a bug out situation because you could just have it ready to go because if you have to jump in your vehicle and go that's the whole point of a bug out vehicle is that you don't have time to prep you have it ready in advance. Behind this door, you'll see I have a air compressor, but that location that I put it in, it kind of leads to getting covered in mud. It probably wouldn't be the case if I didn't have aftermarket fender flares, that area would be a lot more protected, but it gets full of mud and that might be why it's not working super well. But I think it's the switch, not the compressor. The compressors are pretty hardy usually. Pretty cool, I wish I thought of this a while ago. I just strapped that to the mole panel in there. Mole panel, mole, mole. And uh, it just stays there, and now I can still slide this freely with all my stuff. Doesn't even hit it at all. Keeps it tucked in, and it's harder to steal. You'd have to really climb in there. <laughs> Trust me, I tried climbing in there. It sucks, so there's that. I probably will do the same with that water container, but I'll have to relocate my shovel mount. Stick that guy right there. That's perfect. I'm gonna move these so that I can scoop against them. All right, this ammo box goes behind the back seat and inside of it, I keep a few things. I have a come along, actually, a little terminal, for my, terminal cleaner for my dad, a screwdriver, the winch controller. I keep a, this is a pressure gauge for the tires, and these are deflators. This can all go in there with a pair of gloves. And this guy just lives back here. Whew, I'm having the hardest time making this video because I just keep getting caught in the rain and uh, the day's just getting away from me. But uh, one last thing I'm gonna add to my truck. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more stuff I'm gonna throw these traction boards in. Uh, when you're looking at a good, when you're looking at a good vehicle for um, like a bug out rig, you want something that you can basically self extricate if you get stuck. If you get stuck somewhere, you want some tools available to help you get out. So one of the best things, super important things, and it, it goes along with having a good bumper, is having a winch. If you, if you have a winch, you're, you're looking pretty good. You, most scenarios you can get yourself out. We, uh, we started our chicken farm recently. Not much of a farm, it's a little farm. We got 12 chickens, that'll be 12 eggs a day. That's a ton. We didn't realize that when we got them. I thought it was 12 a week. So <laughs> uh, we gotta scoop some of this bark to put into their enclosure. And uh, so I'm gonna use the tractor, Des is gonna film. And then we'll get back to what we're doing on the Tacoma. I think what I'm gonna do is take it somewhere with a nice steep hill and show you guys how, in part, how important those uh, departure and approach angles are. The red tail.
strong. <laughs> this isn't my plan. I thought it was so smart. <laughs> Didn't take into account that this stuff was gonna be soaking wet. <laughs> Mom's in here. We're getting we're getting ready for the chickens. Yes, I do have an extension cord. We need one. Okay. Okay, the chickens are officially in their enclosure. They're little guys, so all right, go in and sh shut that thing. I like your uh, Mennonite dress. Oh, wow, it's got some carol poop on it. I want to hose that off later. Yeah. All right. We'll let these little guys go in here. I'm just going to tip the box sideways. Here we go. Oh. Freedom! Charlie! One eyed Charlie doesn't know what to think. Come on, Charlie. One eyed Charlie. He's chirping for us. These are the anti social ones. They're like, no. They have the poofy heads. I nasty out yeah, here. Come on. Encouragement. Encouragement. Thank <laughs> you.